Hey, good afternoon. You've been looking at photos of a Bulldog pistol, caliber 44, made in Belgium, sometime in the 1870s. As you can tell from the photo, being 145 years old, time has not been kind to it. Uh, the nickel is beginning to peel off. It's also black oxidizing. In spots where it's peeled off, rust is occurring on the bare metal underneath. And the trigger return spring has gotten worn. Uh, I've examined the pistol. I've test fired it. Uh, the functioning is good of it in the aforementioned weak springs. The uh, name, the goal of this project is going to be to rejuvenate the pistol to its original uh, appearance and performance. To accomplish that, I'll be disassembling the pistol using a Dremel tool and a wire brush, uh, removing all rust and corrosion. Then I'll be soaking it in a chemical bath available from Brownells Corporation designed to remove the old nickel finish. Then after that's done, I'll wire brush it again. Then I will copper plate it. Uh, after the pistol is completely copper plated, then I will soak it in a solution that nickel plates it uh, using electrolysis. The uh, old springs will be replaced with new V springs I'll be making using a uh, spring making kit from Brownells Corporation. The, uh, this video, if you're wondering, is being filmed on a uh, Pentax WP10 pocket camera. It's a pocket digital camera, which as you can see is also capable of capturing video. I'll be uh, record. I am recording on a SanDisk card of uh, 64 gigabyte size, uh, category 10 memory, which means it's fast, over 80 megapixels a second, which makes it absolutely perfect for recording a video of this type. The um, throughout the project. I'll be uh, using tools uh, obtainable from Brownells Corporation and uh, some suppliers at Amazon, etc. And when appropriate, I will mention them. If you've got a similar project in mind, feel free to uh, go to the links uh, in the blog and uh, check out the prices. Might be good. Let's go on to the next thing. Oh, one other thing. I should point out, this video is not going to be a fastly, a quickly made video. It's going to encompass several days. The reason for that is there are chemical projects, uh, chemical aspects to this. Uh, time is required for certain chemical processes to occur, such as the dissolution of the old nickel on the frame. The uh, electrolysis addition of new nickel to the frame, etc. Those things take a while. So too does making V springs. I will show you how the V springs are made uh, when it goes, when the project reaches that stage. But just be aware that this project's going to take place over a couple of different days, and accordingly, from time to time, you see me in different clothing and. What it's about is this is not a 20 minute video, although it might only take 20 minutes for you to view it. I hope you enjoy it. Bye bye. Hey, me again. Uh, yeah, I got safety glasses on, which is a real good idea for what I'm about to do. Whenever possible, I'm going to try and film outdoors. But for right now, I disassembled the pistol. I want to show you an example of the kind of corrosion. that uh, coats the pistol. This is the underside of the trigger guard. Uh, you can see why well, I got some bright shiny areas. I also have areas like here where the plating is peeled off or turned black with oxide. Down here we have rust. And what I'm going to try and do is 
just remove some of that using my Dremel tool. So bear with me. The reason for the safety glasses is every now and then a little piece of this wire wheel breaks off, flies up, hits the safety glasses and bounces off. But you should be able to see here there's a market difference is slowly occurring. Okay, I finished dremeling the tool, uh, the uh, trigger guard. As you should be able to see, the rust is gone. The corrosion with the uh, black oxide has been largely removed. There's still uh, oxidized nickel there, uh, which is the reason for the dull color there versus the shinier end but the actual rust that was leaching through is gone. Uh, later when I remove the nickel uh, I will of course sand everything smooth to remove any scratches or burrs uh, raised by the wire brushing. Um, but for right now the trigger guard is more or less corrosion free and ready for nickel removing. The same is now true of the cylinder uh, and the frame itself. Uh, they've both been wire brushed and in the case of the chambers and the barrel, a bore brush was run through attached to a drill uh, and while it was being rinsed with water and I'm happy to say a lot of rust came out of that barrel in those chambers and there doesn't seem to be any rust or corrosion remaining in either one at this time. And on to the next step. A company called Brown Elves, known to gunsmiths, uh, makes a chemical called Room Temperature Electroless Nickel Stripping Solution. Comes in two parts, part A, part B. This is part B. This here is part A. The procedure is to mix part A and part B in a measuring cup on a one-to-one -one ratio. So you would have one part part A, one part part B. Then to that, you add three parts distilled water. For the purposes of this demonstration, I've made a small amount using half a cup of part A, half a cup of part B and one and a half cups of distilled water. The solution can be used in any glass container, any steel container, and many plastic containers as well. So, for this experiment, or demonstration, I've used an old coffee jar made of glass, and I've already mixed it as you can see, kind of looks like urine, when uh, cl yellow urine, but the odor, no, it's definitely something else in there. Uh, what I've done is I've suspended uh, three of the parts from a iron wire, and they are simply placed in the solution and they're given anywhere from a half hour to one hour to soak. The nickel will then fall to the, literally fall off the items and collect in the bottom of the jar. The fluid can be poured off and reused until it stops working and based on my experience I've got enough here that using a flat pan I can also do the frame of the gun and most of the other internal parts. Uh, every now and then, you just give it a little jigger, and that accelerates the uh, process of removing the, le the nickel from the item. Uh, we'll come back in a half hour, see how it's done. The process of nickel removing uh, can also, of course, be accelerated, but not only by jiggling the materials up and down, but also by using a soft brush to brush them. We're starting to collect sediment in the bottom of the, of the jaw, uh, which of course is the nickel. Um, you can see uh, 
We are getting down to the true color of the iron uh, underneath and in a few minutes I'll remove the items, rinse them, brush them again uh, and then commence copper plating them as a first step prior to re-nickeling them or re-nickel plating them. Uh, that's all. Hi. I want to make a uh, brief video about some issues that have come up in the course of uh, working on this revolver and also to mention some products that are maybe a real good idea to have at hand. Uh, one of my favorite products is these uh, gunsmith screwdrivers made by a company called Grace. They are hollow ground. They're available in various sizes. When taking a pistol apart or a rifle, you want to be careful not to damage the screw heads on them because doing so not only makes using the screws more difficult, but also it can lower the value of the weapon. So these are Grace gunsmith screwdrivers and I personally recommend them. Both Amazon, uh, Brownells, and a couple of other companies carry them. Another useful product I'm finding is this Master Gunsmith screw set. It contains a bunch of screws in size 6 and size 8. Uh, which, although in, intended primarily for scope mounting, I'm also finding them very useful on these old revolvers because they have similar size screws. The, uh, one of the issues that popped up on this cylinder and the trigger guard when I removed the nickel, what I found underneath was a lot of corrosion pitting under the nickel. This was not unexpected to me, uh, and you can see from the photos the kind of corrosion I found on this cylinder. The uh, way to remove them, unfortunately, is a manual intensive method. Use emery cloth. Uh, in this particular instance, I'm using 120 grit because 400 grit just wasn't making a dent in the removal of the pitting. And you do not want to use a powered machine like a Dremel, especially on something with curved surfaces like this, because you will gouge it. You want to take your emery cloth and rub it with your finger following the curve. You could probably on this cylinder, I think I'll probably spend maybe 30 hours combined, uh, at least half a row of the 150 grit to get all of the tiny pits out of the metal that were underneath the corrosion or underneath the nickel plate. Um, in the case of this cylinder, I suspect I've probably reduced its overall diameter by a full caliber in the process of removing the pitting. But overall, that's okay because what are we talking? A uh, thousand for a few thousandths of an inch on this side, a few thousandths of an inch on that side, and overall the gun will look much better when the refinishing is done. If I try plating it while the pitting is in here, 
Number one, the pitting will not, uh, the corrosion oxides will not react with the plating material. Uh, it may fill the voids, but it'll come right out again because it's not pure steel that it would be dealing with. It would be dealing with the black oxides. The best way is to just sand them out. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a horrible job of plating the weapon. You're going to have blotches where, where the pitting prevented the plating from taking. Um, here's my hope to remove almost all of it. I recognize that in these cylinder notches, I probably won't get all the corrosion pitting out. Uh, possibly here in the flutes, at the top of the flutes, I might not get it all out. Some of these pits, I would say they're probably at least two, three thousandths of an inch deep. And it's going to take a lot of rubbing to get to them. And in those grooves, there's just no way of doing it by hand. But still, I'm not going to approach it with a machine. An issue that came up with this revolver uh, frame is that all of the screws were rust corroded in place. For myself, what I decided to do was I have a ultrasonic jewelry tank, cleaning tank that someone gave me used, uh, and I filled it up with. Uh, WD-40, put it outside, let it run for a few hours and let this frame just sit in the hot WD-40 because the ultrasonics uh, make the oil hot, which is why I have it outside so there's no risk of fire. Uh, I let it sit for the better part of a day. Uh, with the tank running every hour or so I went out there and reset the timer and I'm pleased to report that it worked and I was able to loosen these screws and get them out it is not my intention to drill the screws out because I do not know what they look like I do not know how beefy the parts that they go through are likewise I would have to re-tap the gun uh, to put in a replacement screws and that would not be authentic. The best procedure in my opinion is going to be to loosen the screws, remove them, repair the heads of the screws and then work on the inside of the gun. Somebody before me attempted removal of these screws at an earlier date. I don't know if it was a hundred years ago or two years ago. Uh, I can tell you that the damage shows traces of oxide, which implies it was at least 10 or 12 years ago that it occurred. Um, obviously, they attempted to you remove the screws using the wrong kind of screwdriver. Again, for this kind of task, you want a screw with hollow ground. Uh, that is, you want the tip of the screws to be parallel and not V-shaped. If you go to Sears Roebuck and buy screws or Sears or a carpenter shop and buy a hardware store to buy screws, the odds are excellent. The tips of them is V-shaped. And that allows the screwdriver to turn out of the screw hole because it doesn't have a secure fit and that leads to burying of the screw heads and that could also lead to totally stripping the heads of the screws. So use a hollow ground screwdriver with parallel sides. Um, now let me show you what I found inside. Okay. Here we have the trigger and the hand and the hand spring. As you can see, they are filthy. I will be wire brushing them, then soaking them in nickel remover. 
The frame, of course, was already externally wire brushed, and I will next soak it in nickel remover, and then I will commence removing the pitting that I know is underneath that nickel plate. The uh, hammer is going to require the same treatment. Uh, it was originally nickel plated, and instead uh, it has gotten very grungy. One of the interesting things about this hammer is the attachment mechanism. It's very similar, if you can see that little T sticking out. That's very similar to what you see on the Colt 1878 revolvers. Uh, where you have a little T and the mainspring has hooks on it to capture that T. An example right here is the mainspring. Notice the screw hole at the base of it and at the top you see those little hooks. You want to be careful when removing these because often you will find when you take the gun apart that one of those ears has broken off. Sight Little Gun does detail a procedure for repairing this by using a wider spring, cutting a T at the top, narrowing it down at the base, then folding the ears over and filing them so that you have a hook like that. Uh, fortunately, I do not have to do that at this time. A uh, arena in which I seem to be lucky is all three of the screws that held the frame and the internal parts together appear to be original and also identical. That's not a rule. Sometimes when you take these guns apart you're going to want to Remember which screw came from which hole because sometimes there are different lengths and shapes and sizes. Regarding the mainspring screw, uh, which is this one here, most of the Bulldog revolvers I've played with, this screw uses a one quarter inch wrench. That's not a rule, but I've found it to be true for most of them. And, of course, I use a magnetic tray to capture my parts. Uh, I advise everyone to think about doing that. This is the trigger return spring, as anticipated. It's a V-spring. It actually feels somewhat stiff. I'm not sure why I've got a weak trigger return. It could be that perhaps over time the ears have grown too close together and maybe it just needs spreading. I will make a duplicate one. I will also attempt to spread this one further out. If that solves the problem, great. If not, then I'll be making a duplicate. I use the flame oil technique and bend the spring material to the appropriate shape. Then I put it in a pan of oil, metal pan of course, set the oil afire. When the oil goes out, either I have a spring or I don't. Uh, that should be it for this video. I'll now focus on cleaning these parts and denickeling them. One last thing about this hammer. You notice this little dog here? That's a spring-loaded dog. Often on these revolvers, what the assembly technique was, was to hold the spring and the dog in with a screw, and then smooth the metal so that the head of the screw just totally disappeared. Unlucky on this one, the head of the screw is still discernible. I should be able to remove it without much problem, thereby removing the spring so that these parts can go into an electrolysis bath without damaging the spring. Uh, again, I was also lucky in terms of the loading gate. 
I'm able to access the loading gate spring through the top by removing a screw and I'm going to pick that spring out and take it aside so it too does not go into an electrolysis bath because that might weaken the spring. End video. I want to show you how uh, the gun came out after going through the denickling process. Uh, this is it. As you can see, there are still traces of uh, pitting and corrosion on it. Uh, it's not nearly as bad under the nickling as I had feared it would be, but there's clearly uh, some dark spots and obviously I have a visitor helping. Well, he doesn't care. Um, similar with the uh, small parts such as the hammer you can see some traces of corrosion here. Um, there's some wear marks. Obviously, 140 years old. This should be. Uh, trigger's not too bad. But there's definitely corrosion pitting at the edge of the barrel on the barrel itself. And one thing I'm going to do, I've decided. So I'm going to take my end mill, chuck this in the vise, and just run a small end mill down this rear sight groove, uh, which right now is not really functional as a rear sight, it's more of a decoration. But it occurs to me if I make it a sixteenth of an inch wide and well, oh, sixteenth of an inch deep, it will then become a functional rear sight, which would be something really unusual on a bulldog. The um, corrosion pitting on the small parts, uh, this would be the uh, rebound lever to cause the hammer to rebound, but under magnification, it's got a lot of corrosion pitting here. It was never nickel plated, but I ran it through the denickler anyway. Basically, I'm going to be renickling all of the uh, parts of the revolver except for the springs. To combat continuing rust and corrosion, I've got two options. Option one, of course, is an electrolysis tank uh, followed by wire brushing. I have that capability. Option two is soak everything in a tank of vinegar. Uh, I'm going to go with option two. I find both methods give about the same results. They both stop rusting and they neutralize any corrosion process underway. The washing soda electrolysis method is good if you have a lot of rusty material. Uh, basically you fill a jug with tap water, add washing soda, about a half cup for something this size. Positive terminal is your anodes. Here I'm using uh, graphite electrodes and your items to be de-rusted are the negative anode. Uh, so the cost of de-rusting this is only a few pennies. The water can be reused over and over, which is why it's black in color because I've been reusing it and it's just rust sediment floating uh, in the water. The vinegar process where you fill a container with vinegar, add the metal, let it sit for couple of hours, uh, then take it out, rinse it, run it through a baking soda bath uh, to neutralize the vinegar acid, then rinse it off and dry it. I find they both give, both methods give about the same result. Either one stops the corrosion uh, and the difference is cost. Washing soda is much cheaper than buying vinegar. Uh, 
as you can see I'm also working on an old farm all tractor and there's a lot of rust in there I've got it running but I need to uh, take the governor apart and also remove some broken springs inside the governor right now she'll just run it full throttle only which is not good um, but I just wanted to show you the uh, two methods also my herbivore cat who eats grass <laughs> um, that's uh, basically it uh, later on of course the meadow in addition to sanding it down smooth with, uh, to at least an 800 grit finish um, it will be nickel plated and I will show you that when we reach that stage the screws that were in the frame examining them under magnification I found a lot of uh, corrosion on the uh, screw shafts so after doing some checking I determined the uh, size of the screw hole and the screws are just underneath the US size 6 bolt size uh, so I'm going to retap the frame uh, for a 632 bolt and make a new bolt out of some 6D nails that are of the correct diameter um, obviously cut them the length thread the portion at the end about a quarter of an inch that requires threading and cut a uh, slot at the top of it for a uh, screwdriver head then those two will go in the nickel plating tank so that I'll have new screws of a modern thread tap uh, and at the same time everything will be nickel plated uh, that's all I just want to add that vinegar is working quickly you can already see the corrosion starting to stand out on the uh, frame and that vinegar will take it all off okay after a few hours in the uh, vinegar and in a wire brushing this is how the pistol frame came out uh, I think that looks markedly better uh, I still got to wire brush these crevices on the inside uh, all of it of course will be polished with a fine grit uh, but I think we gotta admit that's a major improvement over where we were the uh, internal parts like the hammer they also came out good um, some fine polishing wire brushing uh, still left down in this area but basically I think that's a heck of a lot better the uh, same with the trigger uh, it too the corrosion has been neutralized and uh, wire brushing has brought out some of the luster after these parts are uh, sanded smooth with 1000 grit I will copper plate them and then aluminum plate them and then reassemble everything back into the pistol.